Hola. Hello. I just finished my one-to-one. -one. <laughs> ah, cool. How did it go? <laughs> Good. Yeah. I passed time? my <laughs> test. <laughs> with... Do they actually give you a test? Yeah, so they gave me a test. Every time do they do a test? No, no. First, uh, this is a like second one. First time was, uh, how are you? Right. What so, uh, What do you want to do? Yeah. Why you are, want to learn English? Something like that. Right. And now that was a test, and I passed the test. Good. So it's like, an, uh, do they try to assess your English skill level? Yes. Did they tell you? Oh, who is it? I don't. I keep saying they. Uh, I have uh, Mary. Okay, and did she say? Um, did she give you like a a skill level like uh, a, a, like? No, the, she didn't uh, tell me a skill level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because uh, we don't have now uh, levels. Yes. No, not uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, she said uh, we will see some levels in future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but now we have only. Uh, but uh, levels are connected with uh, grammar, so uh, simple uh, present is uh, 100. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, connection with uh, grammar and topic is. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't a little work. different. Yeah, and, uh, some you know I came because uh, subject is uh, interesting, not because of grammar, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and I said her, so we have one type of grammar, so we should have something more like I don't know. I said so you suggestion about uh, asking about. Uh, or about clarification. Mm -hmm. About clarification of. Uh, you know, you know, want to know something else because you don't understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you be more specific? Something like that. Ah, yeah. Definitely. So more, more deeper conversation because. Yeah. Uh, now is uh, sometimes like shot to shot. <laughs> you asking, you answering, um, uh, with simple rules like, uh, where do you live? I live uh, in Poland, <laughs> and uh, this is okay. But uh, what region of Poland do you live, for example? Yes, and uh, would be great to. Uh, improve some, such skills as this. Okay, like conversational skills, asking further yeah, questions? Yes, you know, maybe make some longer conversation than uh, ask, answer, and finish, and go to another student. Yeah. Uh, do you mean for every class, or just have some classes focus on? No, no, I thought about uh, you add some new uh, mm -hmm. level. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, because maybe will come some basic students, so they need... Uh, I, I have seen some students need uh, basic uh, grammar. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think uh, if you... Uh, will have wider view of gamma will be better <laughs> we don't stuck with ending with s yeah exactly uh, uh, by the way we don't have ending with s do <laughs> no, we, <don't. laughs> no, no, we have uh, although it's something that we've definitely talked about uh, before uh, we're doing advanced prepositions again this will be like Maybe the fourth time I've done this in the last week. Uh, advanced two and four. So, um, so um, looks like you've gone from one one to one session to another. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Uh, 
I don't know. My, maybe uh, other students have a one to one too. I don't know. Maybe, or maybe they're all hanging out with Miracle. She's talking about Brazil right now, so maybe everyone wants to talk about Brazil instead of Roll Doll. Who they're like? Who's Roll Doll? <laughs> yeah. By the way, do you know who Roll Doll is? Um, no, no. He's a writer, and uh, wrote books, and most famously wrote children's books. And most famous of the books are um, James and the Giant Peach, uh, the BFG, Matilda, and the most famous is uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, so um, I have seen the movie. <laughs> Uh, which one, the uh, original old one or the new one? I, uh, new one with Johnny Depp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that one, um, but it, I might like it because I like Roald Dahl and I love Johnny Depp. Um, but I, uh, the original one has Gene Wilder and it is fantastic. So. Anyway, so he's the guy. Who's the guy who created Willy Wonka? That's his invention, Roald Dahl. He he's got a quite quite an imagination, very creative. Guy and his books are great. Um, so it was a children's book, and uh, became a very popular part of our culture. So that's what I'm talking about today. In advanced two and four, do um, you remember advanced two and four? How we do that? Um. Like, who's your favorite writer, and why are they famous? Hmm. A writer. <laughs> if you have one. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, I would choose uh, Julius Verne. Who? Uh, Julius Verne. Okay. And why? Uh, what are they famous? Uh, because for? I like uh, science, so. <laughs> uh, I like uh, his idea about uh, science. Mm -hmm. And and so the other question I have is, why is he famous? Why he is famous? Uh, hmm. Because a lot of people bought his book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, so one way we could use for uh, the, the preposition for, uh, when talking about why someone's famous, you could say he's uh, famous for writing popular books. Oh, okay. That's that's so it's that's the advanced version of four, and the advanced version of two is um, uh, why do you study English? Uh, to improve my communication skills. To so not to the store and not for her, but to uh, improve my life and for. Uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. He's famous for something. So it's a different way of using, more advanced way of using it. So we're not talking about the basics like going to and so that's that is so it's a little more advanced actually. Uh, so we'll look at that a little bit today. I had one. I've never had an empty class so far. I had one class a couple of days ago. Yeah, I think it was two days ago when it was just me and Cheche for like the first 30 minutes. 30. So maybe Wafa will join us in, in 15 minutes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was me and Cheche for like 30 minutes just working together, and then Wafa joined us. <laughs> so uh, it was fine, you know, we just did a class, but it was fun, you know. Um, so. Um, but I think some uh, uh, we have some rush hours. Uh, sometimes uh, class is full. About uh, for me is five p.m. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah, morning for me. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> all over the world want to <laughs> in this hour uh, study English. So. Maybe that's the most popular. Yeah, I don't teach at that time. So. Um, How many classes do you take per day? Uh, six, seven. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. That's good. That's a lot of practice. And what's the? Have you ever had a full, full class where no one can get in for new Colingo? Um, 
uh, one to one, I am first. So I. No, I mean like uh, one of these new Kalingo classes where um, where you where there's like more where there's ten people in the class since they changed it. Um, now we have these smaller classes, but you said there's a rush hour. So is there? A yes, class? yes. So uh, ten people. All, almost ten people. Yeah. Yes, I have been in class with ten people, oh. but uh, then they have to go. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with eight, maybe <laughs> was the most. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's about the most I've taught in the new Kalingo is six or seven, maybe. Usually it's like two. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've been to most of my classes. Yes. <laughs> you've been to the bulk of them, the majority. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about, um, when we talk about advanced prepositions, that's particularly two and four, um, you notice how when talking about the word two and four, you pronounce them in their full way. But um, so the pronunciation within the sentence using these prepositions changes yeah. because they become uh, <laughs> of stress. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like you're spitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so we have two and we have four. And not t, but t, yeah, t, yeah, or almost like t. It depends. It depends on the next word, but it's like schwa sound. Um, and four kind of becomes fur. Um, so, I'm trying to think of an example sentence right now. To okay. So uh, I'm using a short, I'm using um, uh, advanced preposition in this sentence, and we can work on our pronunciation. So how about this sentence? OK. He went to college to get uh, a better job. Right. Uh, we got, uh, so we have, a, uh, so yeah, we have like a basic preposition. And then two, and then just two, two words later, we have the advanced preposition, which is exactly the same. He went to college, which is normal and then uh, to get a better job is the advanced version yes but yeah so he went to college <clears throat> and the and the two kind of connects with the next word so um, when, when putting the whole sentence together it's he went to college to get a better job he went to college so it becomes oops to college and Went to college. <laughs> okay. She went to college to get a better job. Ah, good. So you got the vowels and you got the whole uh, sentence flow, which is even more advanced than I'm supposed to be teaching right now. So that's that's on a very American. Uh, It's not a problem if you want to uh, know what to say. <laughs> what do you mean? This problem is uh, uh, recalled from memory, uh, right uh, mm -hmm. words you want to <laughs> speak. Yeah. yeah. It just takes practice to figure out how to. And one thing is just always true with these unstressed, all these unstressed prepositions and articles, these little words. Like they, uh, when you talk about the sentence flow, they always connect to the next word. So, like, if it's an article, it's the same thing, you know. 
Uh, he took the train to Moscow. No, he took the train to Moscow, or he took the train to Moscow. Took the train, and it becomes the the is very quiet and very hushed and uh, connects to the next word. I wish I could teach pronunciation classes again, because I really miss doing that. Um, but I, it's very helping uh, with listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you know what to expect, you can catch these sounds. Yeah, you start hearing it more often. And then it's yes. a matter of reproducing it yourself, though. And so we know we're getting we get used to hearing how it's supposed to sound, but then we got to try to also mimic that ourselves. I remember uh, when I started to learn English. Uh, I what? Well, I don't speak English. What <laughs> am I talking? Oh, you didn't. <laughs> I, yes, and I start with uh, uh, British English, so oh, very different. Uh, very difficult because they eat more, especially they don't uh, use R. Yeah, it's almost uh, no exist. Right. I mean, at the end of a word, yeah. Or in the middle, too, a lot, after a vowel, yeah. Yeah, if it starts with an R, then we say it. But if, the, yeah, I guess basically maybe the rule in pronunciation in British English is when the R follows a vowel, it kind of disappears. And the R is before a vowel, then it's pronounced. I think that's right. I just, I'm just putting the words in my head. I think that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, ha. Yeah. It's uh, only ha. Uh, no, almost no, uh, re, all, almost in English, uh, b American English is ha. Right. Uh, uh, and, uh, in English is ha. Right. The vowel is the same, actually, in both languages. Uh is the vowel, uh, which is like in German, the umlaut, o, uh. Um, but, um, oh, we don't have any words in American English or British English that say, uh, but when you, but, uh, when you put it together in the word, it's like, huh, it's like, what, what is, I really like her dress, uh, and it's, I really like her dress, uh, it's, we're still saying, uh, but when you put the R after it, it goes her, and so it just changes the vowel, that's kind of interesting. Um, and I think they have uh, with con uh, vowels from uh, higher pitch, mm -hmm. Maybe. especially if I listen to Sakina. Oh yeah, that's right. We have all sorts of different accents in the in the, in Colingo too. It used to be talk to American, but now we have Australians and Canadians. Yes, <laughs> but which is good for listening practice. So. Actually, Daniel is a Canadian. He's got a Canadian accent. Um, I can detect it. Maybe it may be hard for you to tell, but yes, I for me, it. it's not enough. It's to... very similar. It's very similar to American. But for me, I can definitely tell that he's not American. I can totally tell because uh, it's very. I have a very sensitive ear, of course. Uh, but yeah, Canadian and American accents are quite quite close. Uh, have you heard uh, ever Simon? He's from Canada too. Oh, Simon, yeah, and I've listened to. Yeah, I have watched one of his classes. I never, I haven't met most of my fellow teachers, but I, sometimes I watch their classes to see how they work. And he's he doesn't really have a Canadian accent. I can't really hear it. His is really. I don't notice any Canadian accent there. I don't think I I, I haven't really listened to him very much. So it's hard to detect. Maybe because he worked to American companies. Mm, maybe so. Yeah. Um, let's look at uh, look into these uh, advanced prepositions. We have a little time here. We can take a lot more time in this class since I don't have to talk to more than one person. <laughs> so there's a lot more free time. Uh, as you may know, prepositions of place and prepositions of time have simple rules to follow. Uh, however, 
there are also more advanced uses for some prepositions. Uh, we'll focus on the two cases, verb plus two and verb plus four. That's the thing. It's not to a place or for a noun. It's verb plus two. But so, Christoph, why don't you uh, read on? Okay, there are many uses for this uh, construction in the English language, but it's important not to get confused. For example, think about the difference between using want to versus using want alone in a sentence. I want ice cream. I want to get ice cream. I want better communication. I want to learn advanced English. Two. There are many advanced uses of the preposition to in English. In fact, the following categories include verbs that are commonly pro pre preceded by to. And um, good. So, and this chart is hard to read because it's formatted all funky. Sorry about that, but. So basically, we have we're categorizing it. Yes, interest, desire, intention, obligation. So willing to, refuse to. I want to go to school. I like to play hockey. I prefer to watch horror movies, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Intention. I plan to go to bed at midnight. I intend to send a letter to my parents. I have to brush my teeth. Obligation. These are all the different ways we use to in the advanced form. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's continue talking about construction. OK, construction, subject, I, you, the class, plus verb, plus two, plus verb phrase, I intend to watch every episode of Lost. He prefers to work at home. Uh, the verb uh, after, to, must be base form, infinitive. Uh, I refuse to drink Coke. Note, I refuse to drink Coke. Some of these verbs must be used with to, verb phrase, or an verb, uh, and some don't. Uh, I reply to custom to the I reply to the customer, or I reply it quickly. Not I reply Paul. Mm -hmm. Yep. Continue. Uh, some of this verb. Uh, if used in the present, must be used in the present continuous. I'm willing to take. I'm willing to wake up early for a, for work. I'm uh, preparing to graduate this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Present continuous. I am willing to. Right. Um, and then we use the to be. That's when we use that to be there. Uh, okay, so uh, when we talk about four, um, there's uh, here's our categories. Uh, these are commonly preceded by the word four. We have we talk about feelings. Happy for you. Yeah. We feel excited for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Purpose for action. I pay for the dinner. Right. Columbus looked for the new world. <laughs> I cook for my family. Yep. Popular for drinking a lot of <laughs> Yes. And famous for writing a lot of books and drinking a lot of booze. <laughs> um, good. Let's, uh, let's look at the construction. Go ahead and read. Uh, construction, subject, I, you, he, the company, plus to be, plus adjective, plus for phrase. Uh, he is famous for his good looks. Uh, she's famous 
uh, for being in a new movie. I'm happy for you. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll be back. I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Construction. Subject plus verb plus form plus noun. Noun phrase. No verbs. Uh, I paid for my tuition. Oops. I paid for my tuition in advance. My mom cooked for 20 guests. That's a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> Will be big party. Yes. Lots of food. Sounds like my mom. She likes to cook for 20 people. She would do that. She enjoys the challenge of cooking. Um, all right. So we got to review some of that again. That's good. And that's important. That's uh, some interesting stuff because it's very, 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 very common in uh, in English. There is. Oh, I gotta get my uh, discussion article so we can take a look at it together. Okay, uh, so let's talk about Roald Dahl. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's a strange name. I've never heard of Roald. It looks like Ronald without the N. Roald. Uh, British guy. Speaking of Brits. African Cats and American Espionage, Roald Dahl's Letters, due in 2016. The author's extensive correspondence from boarding school letters to dispatches. Weird. Dispatches. Huh. Must be British spelling. From Africa and the U.S. will be published on the centenary of his birth. Do you know what centenary means? You can probably figure it out from the spelling. Centenary is uh, 100. <laughs> exactly, 100th anniversary. You can see that. It's an easy word to figure out, even if we've never seen it before. There he is. Pretty dapper fellow. Uh, inventive correspondent, I think. A collection of warm, charming, and quirky letters by Roald Dahl throughout his life, beginning with the first his first days at boarding school, and extending to his later years when he spent two hours a day responding to readers, are to be published in a collection to coincide with the centenary of his birth in 2016. Donald Sturrock, Dahl's official biographer, who is bringing the book together, described the letters as amusing and inventive. Dahl began writing to his mother and sister from boarding school in Weston super Mare when he was eight and uh, continued to do so throughout his life. Uh, his mother collected them assiduously, said Sturrock. His early letters uh, are filled with the boyish enthusiasm, excuse me, enthusiasm and littered with spelling mistakes. Dahl was a notoriously bad speller all his life, he added. Uh, in one, dated uh, February 25th, 1928, the 12-year-old Dahl wrote, Angel has just received a marvelous motor canoe, which is paddled by a man. All his joints move just like real. And if you set this thing at, the thing at 20 yards, it'll go 20 yards, turn, and come back to you. Or if you like it, we'll right turn or quarter turn. It's the furthest, uh, it's furthest is 35 yards, which is in all is 70, 70 because it comes back. We are going to try it in the boat pond today. Dahl would later write about how ghastly he found it at boarding school, but the letters very much want to entertain and amuse, Sturrock said. Clutches of letters exist from the Dahl spent from the time Dahl spent in East Africa as a young man working for Shell. Uh, the Africa letters are fun because at this point he wasn't published. He and he didn't even know he wanted to be a writer, Sturrock added. Dahl took the job in anticipation of exploring Africa, but was forced to wait three years before being posted there. After arriving, he began inventing stories about his domestic life, 
especially his cats, to compensate for the lack of jungle adventure. Writing from Dar es Salaam in Tangakia, uh, Tangani Tanganyika, uh, which is now Tanzania, to his mother in Bromley when she was 22, when he was 22, he described his living conditions in the house he shared with the two other Shell employees. Other inmates of the house are Sam, known to his friends as his, uh, his dog Samka, a guard dog with the biggest tool and the longest tail, always wagging, that I've ever seen. He's black and the size of a very large sealy ham, but he doesn't know who his parents were. Then there's Oscar, a large white Persian cat. Very fine, but very, very Kali, which is Swahili for savage or truculent. If you offer him a bit of fish, he'll bite your finger off just for fun. We attribute this attitude to repression and to the physical disabilities under which he labors. You see, he had his pocket picked when he was young, if you see what I mean. Nevertheless, Oscar is a very Kelly cat, although no one can dispute his beauty. Dahl also describes a beautiful blue Persian called uh, Mrs. Tobzipus, the name he later gave to the American president's cat in Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, which is, by the way, the um, sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's the second. There's a sequel. Dahl later joined the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force in England. Uh, RAF, and following a crash in 1940, in which he was nearly killed, uh, was invalided out and went to America working very loosely as a spy. The letters from America are very entertaining, describing a rather glamorous life there. And he is endlessly sending things back to family in England who were enduring rations, chocolate sweets, and outsized shoes for his Norwegian cousin, said Sturk. There's also a full complement of letters in an archive to his agent, Sheila St. Lawrence at the Watkins Agency, all handwritten on the yellow legal paper that Dahl favored. The thing that struck me was how detailed and obsessive he was about getting something that he was pleased with, said Sturk. Not exactly tearing things up, but he would go back to square one. He was very responsive to what he thought was good criticism, but he did not like it if he felt that somebody had not taken the time to understand what he was trying to do. Dahl began his career writing for adults. His agent spent much of the 1950s trying to persuade him to write for children, which he finally did at age 40. In the later years of his life, before he died in 1990, Dahl would start each day answering letters from his legions of fans. The collection of letters is to be published by John Murray Publishers as part of the centenary year in 2016. Okay, I'm trying to get this out of here. Mm. Are you are you guys still seeing the uh, the the? What do you see on the screen right now? Uh. I, uh, okay. with I tried to. I'm trying to. I deleted him. He's off my screen, but he's still on the Hangout somehow. <laughs> I don't know how that happened because I I closed the window. And usually when I do that, oh, let me try. Let me try something here. Maybe you have to pick somebody else. Um, I tried. I'm trying to share a different screen, and it's not working. So. Huh. So you have to you just pretend that this guy is me for the rest of the class, <laughs> or I could refresh my screen, which I'll try doing right now. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Don't talk about that guy anymore. Uh, hello, Chu. Hello, teacher. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? Good. Sorry I didn't uh, greet you when you came in. I was in the middle of uh, reading that article. but uh, That's okay. Yeah. Good I'm to listening you. to your um, reading. Great. Um, have you heard of Roald Dahl, Chu? No, this is the first time I, I heard of it, uh, him. Have you ever heard of Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? <laughs> no. no okay. I mean, yeah. It doesn't matter because I have been, I really read um, English English novels or articles, uh, but 
um, yeah, acceptor news or some um, some books are related to my to my uh, major. Okay, and what's your major again? I can't remember. Education. Education. Good. Yeah. And um, the reason I ask is because Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was a big movie too. If you watch movies, so and it was based on one of his books. Yeah, I will look look at it uh, from the website to to see where I can find the movie uh, of him of this topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and his books are very creative. Oh, it's great. Maybe I, one day I will read the book. Yeah, I would recommend it. I used to read it when I was a kid. Actually, it'd be good reading because it's made for uh, uh, their children's literature, but it's very good. So it'd be good if you're learning English. Uh, so we were talking about advanced prepositions before too, and um, Christoph, let's do a little review here. So um, maybe Christoph can help us figure out. So we're talking about two and four, especially the, the prepositions two and four, but using two and four in a different way. So maybe Christoph can help us remember how we use this by saying, um, by answering why. Is Roald Dahl famous? Why is he famous? And you can use two or four to explain that. Okay. Uh, Roald Dahl is famous for uh, his writing mm -hmm. yeah. book for uh, two children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, famous for writing. Oh, children. Children's books. Yeah. Children's books. Yeah, yeah hmm. famous writing children's books, children's literature. So. You know, the basic use of for is I bought these eggs for breakfast, you know, uh, or for my mom or something. But when we say I went to school for education, it's uh, that's a more advanced way of saying it. So why have they decided to publish his letters? These are just letters. These weren't books, but now they're going to publish these letters. Why have they decided to do that? And you can use your opinion if you want, or anything. Mm. Maybe because of how they are, uh, will be century of uh, his birth. Mm -hmm. But uh, they will do that in uh, 2016. Yes. 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 So. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's a lot. Uh, is, uh, sorry. Uh, is the author of the of the book or uh, still alive? Mm -mm. No, he died in 1990. If he was still alive, he would be almost 100 years old. He would be, <laughs> be 97. He'd be 97 years old by now. Okay. So we are getting that. What's the reason why um, someone um, um, give the authority to the publisher to mm -hmm. um, to publish his letters? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this happens sometimes when uh, famous writers die. A lot of times, people the uh, people who are in charge uh, of his work. Uh, will make a decision to publish m further writing uh, post. I don't want to say. I don't want to say post yes, I think. I think maybe just like you, uh, still there have a lot of uh, uh, fans of his book, and uh, they want to know more about his life. And as his life is so um, fantastic, mm -hmm. I mean, because his uh, he um, he. Have done a lot of work, like a spy or joined in the IAF, and mm -hmm. still he is a writer. Firstly, write for the adults, and finally he transferred to he translated to write books for kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is all of this thing is very interesting, and uh, maybe um, we are interested in his life and what's um, happening in his life. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason why we, um, why um, someone in charge of his works 
uh, wants to publish the his uh, yeah. letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. So, um, why did Roald Dahl move to the U.S. for a while? Does anyone remember why? As a losing spy. Uh, ah, yes, as a spy. Yeah, good memory. Yeah. <laughs> Why? This guy had an interesting life, like a regular James Bond. I think uh, this is the reason why uh, USA make prison <laughs> <laughs> to spy Europe now. <laughs> <laughs> prison. I think I think Snowden now is a spy in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double eyed agent. Deep throat. <laughs> Ah, uh, that would be funny. Um, speaking of agent, um, how did Roald Dahl's agent try to shape his career? Uh, uh, he wanted to convince him to write uh, books for children, not for adults. Perfect, exactly, yeah. Uh, to convince him to write for children, not for adults. He, he liked to write for adults, but uh, his agent smart, I guess, and could tell that he would be perfect as a children's writer. And he was very successful. Um, Maybe out of his expectation, like I wa I'd like to write books for adults. I don't know that um, a lot of kids wants to read my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't know until until it's until he did, and then realized, oh, people are buying it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so. So yeah, two and four, two and four. And, and uh, yeah, I want to ask a question about why um, Dao um, is interested in writing book was interested in writing books on cats because uh, um, although I attended your course later, but I found that when, when you are reading, when you were reading, there are a lot of paragraphs um, give description on cats, like pers Persian ca cats and uh, uh, like other kind of cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They just said that he just really uh, thought it was kind of entertaining. He liked to entertain himself and others um, and by writing about cats. He just got a kick out of it, I guess. And yeah, that was funny. I want to know that maybe in his life, cat is an image or a symbol, or um, to represent um, something that um, maybe uh, have a deep meaning. Uh, it's, it's just a guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. Uh, it's possible. Although he was one thing about Roald Dahl is he was very whimsical and absurd. He, he... Sorry. He used this a lot in his children's writing. He loved to be whimsical and absurd. Um, so these words define uh, his style and his... his whimsical. I don't know the meaning of the whimsical. Oh, I know. These are new vocabulary words. For <laughs> so whimsical means like fanciful or um, fun or um, uh, light. So um, And with not much meaning, just kind of like, kind of just kind of funny. Oh, thank you for correcting my spelling, Krishna. Um, whimsical, sorry about that. And um, so and a whim, if you do something on a whim, it means you, uh, like, uh, I, uh, I applied for graduate school on a whim. Like, I didn't even plan it. It's just like, it just, just fast. So it's like, uh, you know. And then absurd is like, just crazy. And it's just weird. And he loved to be both. And he's also very funny. And so he's especially they talk about these cats uh, is when when he was in Africa, and um, or was it waiting to go to Africa? And either way, he would write these letters about uh, animals just like he was in the jungle in a safari or something. And then he'd talk about these cats like really dramatically, like uh -huh. drama. So it's kind of a, a joke, and uh, so that's part of it. Uh -huh. So I think this is the reason why it's yeah it's so popular because it's full of uh, adventures and uh, animals. As a cat, at uh, when I was a child, I just found myself um, obsessed with uh, adventures and uh, all kind of uh, 
uh, animals activities. And, uh, yeah, I think from your introduction, I think um, um, Dao's book is its writing style actually is very um, creative and uh, full of uh, humor, humorous. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Very creative, very original, very unique, very funny, very comical. Used a lot of humor. Uh, very fantastic stuff. I wonder. Let me see. I wonder if I could find. I wonder if I could find a short, short quote from one of his books. So the name of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory actually is a film, um, derived from his book. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's exactly. There's actually two different movies that were made from it because it was so popular. One in the 1960s or 70s, and one just in the last few years. Yeah. Hmm. With Johnny Depp. Yeah, with Johnny Depp, yeah. I'm just looking at... I have watched there some... Uh... Oh, okay. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for some quotes for some of his books. Uh, and there's some interesting ones. Um, I don't know. I want to see. I want to see a bigger one. There's one... Uh, whipped, whipped cream isn't whipped cream at all if it hasn't been whipped with whips, just like poached eggs isn't poached at eggs unless, it, unless it's been stolen in the dead of the night. <laughs> I never remembered that. So he uses puns a lot too, I guess, puns and play on words. Sorry. Mm. I'm, I'm yeah, really... I can get a sense of what is uh, whims Whimsical, uh, yeah, that's whimsy. That's whimsy. Yeah. So I just sent a, I just sent the link to yeah. that. You can read some of his quotes. Some of them are his own words, and some of them are his books. But so you can see some of his writing style. Do you think when you was a child, is uh, his book is hard to write? Is hard to read? Um, because you know sometimes a keys are so pure and simple. Maybe yeah. we just. Uh, read the words but I couldn't get an understanding with what he really wants to express. That's a good, that's a good question. I don't know because I, it was so long ago. I haven't read these books in over 20 years probably. So, Or maybe about 20 years or I don't know. It's been a long time. So, um, I don't remember having problems but I'm sure, I'm sure I didn't catch everything the first time because I was young. Because his books, even though they're children's books, can, can be appreciated by adults. A lot of the best children's writing and best children's movies can also be entertaining to adults. And there's some very, there's also some children's movies and books that are not entertaining to adults. So I prefer, uh, I prefer the the, the, the former. Um, so let's um, let's do a quick assessment for um, our advanced prepositions. We're talking about two and four. And so, let's start with two. We'll do we'll do both. We'll do, we'll have two questions for both of you guys. So, uh, Christoph. Yes. Uh, you can uh, make a sentence um, using two um, with the uh, with the word preferred. Preferred. Um. In past. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, I preferred to read uh, an English book, uh, but they forced me to read uh, Russian books. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Good. So it preferred to read English books, yeah. Good. And uh, okay, so Chu, how about so, say let's do a sentence using to with the verb uh, willing. 
um, I'm willing to attend the um, concert next day. Okay, I'm willing to attend the concert. Okay, all right, good. Um, so let's try four really quickly. So um, uh, this will be really easy. So Christoph, happy? Yeah. Uh, I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Chu? Uh, how about cook using four to cook? Mm, I, cooked di I, cooked, I cooked dinner for myself. Mm -hmm, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, and you can put you can you can put the noun in between sometimes. It's I cook for her, or you could cook dinner for her. So that still works. Very good. Very good. All right. Excellent. So that is our class about literature, and now we will have a travel class, I believe. Yes. Cambodia. Cambodia. Ah. All right. You got your got your schedules out. Excellent. So maybe you'll join me, um, but thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you see you again. Thank you. See you again. Okay. Take care.